Hey everybody, How to Tech bringing you a disassembly on an HTC One A9. Uh, this is the one that looks similar to an iPhone. We're going to see if it takes apart like a, an iPhone. Uh, we're going to use a few tools to disassemble this. Uh, first, we'll be needing a heat gun to help us remove the display off of the device. We also will be needing a small Torx P5 and also a small Philips. This is a double O, I believe. We're using a few additional tools to help us pry the device open. A suction cup, help us possibly remove the screen, a couple playing cards. We have some guitar picks and this gun pick, uh, which I've been using since it's uh, nylon and it's a little bit longer, a little bit easier to get a hold of. Now this screen is actually already broken, so I'm not too concerned about damaging it. Uh, one last tool I should need is a, a razor blade. Uh, I like to use this one to help us pop it open and a sim eject tool of course. We're going to pop the two sim slots out first. The micro SD card and the sim slot. Now you would think that you would open this phone up here from the top but you're actually not going to do that. Uh, what you're going to do is actually heat up the display and pull it off. Now this is, I would say this phone's much more like a, a Samsung Galaxy S5. Uh, is what I would equate it to in disassembly. Now, uh, this display was actually cracked. The LCD is cracked behind the display. I think somebody kneeled on it or something. Um, but it doesn't function correctly. But what we're going to do is we're going to hold up a heat gun here and go around the edges of the device and get it nice and warm. You see the plastic frame that borders the phone. What you're actually going to be doing is separating the glass from the inside of that plastic frame. The plastic frame is actually screwed into the phone. It's actually part of the mid frame of the phone. Uh, so you don't want to try to pull it off uh, without removing the glass first. Those are screws that are holding it in place. And we want to get the screen nice and warm. We don't want to melt the plastic though. Uh, so we're just going to get it hot to the touch. And we'll be trying to use a suction cup and some playing cards to get underneath the screen. Now, I would not use a suction cup if your screen is intact. Uh, this will help us kind of gain entryway. What you can do is use the playing card, cut it on a flat angle, and then kind of stick it in. And see, the goal is, is to kind of pull it back and see if we can't get something started around here. The tolerances are actually very, very, very tight. Still just can't get it in there. So we're going to try this opposite side here real quick. There we go. I see a little gap here. There we go. Sneaked in there. Now you don't want to push the playing card in too far. The display on this phone is incredibly, incredibly thin. Uh, kind of like the Samsung Galaxy S6. Uh, so you don't want to damage it or by pushing the playing card in too far, but you actually crack the display. So we're just going to move the playing card around, see if we can go over the home button. It's not actually a button, it's just a kind of a plate sitting there. Try to cut our way through the adhesive that's underneath. We're going to go ahead and heat up this opposite side of the phone here. Go ahead and work our way down this side of the phone. So you can see that my playing card's already in just a little bit. You can see it damaged the LCD there. So uh, something to be very aware of. I, can't, I know I keep saying LCD, but this phone actually has an AMOLED display. Uh, so I'll just keep trying to say display from here on out. So we're going to try to heat it up a little bit more up here at the top. There's a lot more glue or 3M double sided tape holding it down. So we're just going to heat it up. Get it nice and warm here as well. We'll see if we can't pull this card down and through. Kind of go above the speaker grill and above the front facing camera here. See if we can dip it underneath by pulling it away. All right, so that's really the far as it'll go. So 
I'm trying to push my card in a little bit here and you can see how easy it is to kind of break between the glass and the display so uh, just be very careful if you have a functioning display and trying to open this device it's uh, very real that you might actually damage the display itself so you can see once you've done that you're basically the game's over the the, else, the AMOLED will be broken at that point All right, so we're going to put our suction cup on here see if we've got enough glue pulled apart to help us separate this it still doesn't does not want to come off so we're going to slip our card underneath the display and the glass here and kind of work our way around so we're all the way behind the AMOLED display in the back. You want to be careful because there's a ribbon cable right smack dab here in the center of this device. So pulling it apart you can see the display cable right there down the center and it's actually held in with two screws. So we're going to open it, fold the display back around. Here you can see the connector holding it onto uh, the logic board of the phone. Uh, this is the Phillips head screws in the phone. So we're using our 00 Phillips screwdriver to remove these. All right. With that removed, the next step is to go ahead and take our pry tool and pull this up, disconnect it. With that done, we can go ahead and remove the display. Now, if this is where you're stopping, you can go ahead and insert your new display. If you're employee placing an internal component, you're going to need to remove these remaining eight screws. So we're going to go ahead and remove all eight screws out of the mid-frame of the phone. Now, if you're replacing just the display on this, at this point, you could, like I was saying, once you get the display removed, you can go ahead and just clean the tape off of this device. Go ahead and lay new tape down, or if you bought a tape gasket from uh, that fits this phone, go ahead and lay that down and then put your display back on just in the reverse steps there. Uh, so pretty simple when it comes to replacing the display, uh, but not so easy when it comes to replacing any of the internal components, especially uh, something more like the battery on this phone. It's really just buried all the way in underneath. We're gonna have to remove all the internal components. So now that we have this last screw removed out of the phone, the next step is to go ahead and pry out the internal components. Now to do that, we're actually gonna remove this little plastic strip here at the top of the phone and this will reveal a couple of push points we can use to kind of start to uh, push the frame up and get a start working uh, to remove this from the metal portion of the phone. Now I'm using this, I'm just pushing in slightly here, it's got double sided tape that's holding it down and I found out quickly that it wants to flap itself back down and just uh, re-tapes itself. Uh, so once you pry it up you may uh, want to put your finger on top of it and kind of pull it away. There we go. Now with that done, we can go ahead and set that aside and that will give us the two portions at the top of the phone uh, that we can push a spudger into, these little two black portions here, and that'll go ahead and push the phone up and we can put something in there like a guitar pick. Now you're separating the internal portion of this phone, so that's the logic board, the battery, basically we're just removing the rear metal shell of the phone. So there's little clips that run down the side of this. We're just going to use a guitar pick to work our way down and unsnap these clips to get this internal portion to pop out for us. You can see we got a little bit coming out now. Let's work our way down the sides. Try this side here as well. Perfect, and there we go. We have the foam pushed out. Now, you do want to be careful on the right side with the buttons, uh, so just go light over them. Then we can go ahead and remove the internal portion from the external portion here. So you can see we have the metal housing of the device. So here we have our buttons. It looks like there's just a little piece of plastic holding them in. Let's talk about uh, removing this logic board off of here. So we have three screws on the top portion and then we have four screws down here on the bottom. And our battery right here in the middle. So let's actually pop off our battery connector. This should just pull straight up. Now there's not an easy, good way to pop this thing up 
rather than kind of pushing on these cables here. I'm trying to get my spudger as close to the white plastic portion as possible. It should just pull straight up and off. There we go. Now we can try to work on removing the battery. So usually a longer flat spudger will be your best option. Now if you only have something like this little black spudger, you can use that, uh, but it'll be deforming your battery a little bit more. And you want to stay away from puncturing or deforming it too much. It has adhesive on both sides of the flat cable that you can see right above the battery. It runs down on the right and the left side. So let me grab a little bit wider spudger here. And we'll use that to help us pry the battery out without damaging it so much more. So sticking our lighter spudger in, just working our way down the side of the battery, getting it to lift up a little bit. The goal is to get it started a little bit more, then I can put something even wider underneath it to pull it up. So we'll use the opposite side of this spudger. That'll pop it up. You could use something like a putty knife. I would refrain from using anything that's metal if possible. All right, so there's the internal portion. So here we have our battery. So just a small little guy. And we got glue on both sides of the phone that holds the battery in. Let's go ahead and start talk taking our ribbon cables off here so we can remove the logic board. So we have a little connecting cable here that runs from the bottom charge port portion of the phone up. We have a wire antenna cable connection here. We're just going to snap that up. Pull that away from its guide slots on the phone. Do that to the two on this side also. And we have two additional connectors here, one for the vibration module and one for the buttons on the side of the phone. I'm just going to remove this capped on tape here and put it somewhat near the this place where we removed it. Don't forget where we took it off at. We can remove this, just flip this little connector up and then pull the connector off. Now, if you're looking to replace your buttons, all you would need to do is pull that up, pull them away from the mid frame here. Now, we need to remove the vibration module, and the easiest way I found to do this was actually use a pair of tweezers. It's stuck in there pretty solid on this phone. All right, now with that done, we can go ahead and remove the three screws holding this down. These are the same size, the Torx T5 screws. My magnetic portion of my screwdriver is not working anymore. Oh, great, now it's stuck on the tape. Uh, we'll come back to that in just a second. Let's go ahead and remove the remaining two screws, both here at the top of the phone. One more up here, this is the very top. Now we should go be able to uh, start to pull our logic board away. I'm just gonna grab this screw here real quick with a pair of tweezers. I'm just gonna put our spudger underneath and just slightly pull it up. It should pull right off for you. Now looking at it, we actually both cameras are attached to this, so the front facing camera and the rear facing camera are on here. Now they actually are held off the same connectors you would see uh, for the ribbon cables uh, that run for uh, underneath the board, the kind of the snap on one. So you have to remove this copper uh, covering to remove the rear facing camera. If you pull back the rear facing camera, you'll see the connection for the front facing camera just underneath it. So uh, nothing too crazy there. Uh, shouldn't be too difficult to replace once you get into the phone. Now one thing you can also remove on this phone is the uh, earpiece speaker. You can just pull that out. Your SIM card slots in your vibration module. The SIM card slots should just pull off for us. It might be a little um, it, it, tape underneath. Nope, I was wrong. There's no tape underneath them. Sometimes they're held in with some tape, uh, but not this particular set. All right, now we can work on the bottom portion of the phone. And one thing that is nice about this is this, this assembly down here is replaceable, so the charge port uh, is separate from the re rest of the phone. Uh, the one thing that's kind of stinks about it, though, is it's an all-in-one assembly, so your loudspeaker is down here also. 
We'll snap up the connector. Uh, looks like that's for the home button fingerprint sensor. And then we have our headphone jack down here also. And it looks like the headphone jack has some tape running underneath it and then onto the phone. So we may have to remove that here real quick to kind of get that started. So we're just going to pull some of these cables out. It can be a little tricky. Just be gentle with them as you remove them. Sorry, I have a new camera rig and I'm still getting used to where it's centered at on my desk. But on the bright side, at least this video is recorded in 4K. Remove the remaining four screws from the bottom of the phone. Go ahead and pull out the guide slots here for the cables that are running that are attached to the underside of this board. Go ahead and pull this up. Now, one thing that uh, kind of caught me off guard and the three and a half millimeter headphone jack is a very short cable. I wasn't sure I could actually get it to pull out of the slot, uh, which you can. And also, the board has a kind of a snapping connector right here, but if you pull it from the bottom, you can actually get a round of having to unsnap it. The trick is though is you need to pull out the three and a half millimeter headphone jack ribbon cable and it will pop out. You just have to be a little bit careful with it just using the wings on the sides of the cable to pull it downwards. Sorry that was off camera when I did that. There's also a little bit of tape that's running from the headphone connection uh, to the screen here so I'm going to pull it back here just a little bit and see if we can't remove that tape. So you can see it's still stuck to the board here. I'm using a pair of tweezers to pull it back. Just hold it as we pull it away. And there is the charge port assembly loudspeaker assembly. So at this point, uh, you could go ahead and remove the remaining portion of the headphone jack, or whatever else you'd like to do. I hope you found the video helpful. Hit that like button if you did. Subscribe for future disassembly videos. As always, I appreciate you watching. Hope to catch you on the next one. Peace.